Budget and Finance Committee to order, so maybe we can get out early again tonight. That's a worthy goal. Um, I thank all the departments that are here to explain your budgets to us, and I thank Councilmember Bradford for joining me up front as the uh, chair of the Parks, whatever the new name of that committee is, Public Facilities Committee. Um, and before we begin, I just want to do a quick straw poll. Um, Ms. Hauser is working on putting together an info session to provide uh, that the results of the study on the Department of Homeless Services. Is that what we're calling it now? Um, as part of Councilmember um, O'Connell's bill, that, that study has been completed and the results um, will probably take about an hour so uh, to present to us in, in full. Um, and they are available the 25th and the 26th? Mostly the 26th, which is a Thursday, which is a planning commission day. So the question is, would members be available for a breakfast meeting, say, or lunch, or three o'clock before we begin um, these department hearings? Those are kind of our three choices. The three, the three o'clock theoretically would allow you to scurry down to the Howard office building if you have something on, on planning. Um, but of those, uh, let, there is no budget of hearing. That's right. It's on the 25th. I was, I was considering putting another meeting that that could back up with, but um, correct. So it could be at four. Well, it could be at four o'clock, but then that lands squarely on top of the planning commission. Okay. So I'm just going to ask for a quick. So the four options I'm going to give you are breakfast, lunch, three and four. Okay. And I'm going to ask for the, each of those. So you know what those four are. Raise your hands for your favorite choice. We are not doing quadratic voting. This, no, this, but you're the ones who are here that I can hear from. So I'm hoping y'all will be a representative group. So very quickly, if y'all can just, yes, sir. Will lunch be provided? Will lunch be provided? <laughs> sure. <laughs> we'll work on it. If you show up, we'll, we'll work on it. How about that? So again, the choices are, brec I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say breakfast, lunch, three and four. Those are our four choices. And I'm just going to ask people to raise your hands for the ones that you could make for it. Therefore, you can vote more than once um, if you really think you could come at that time. Councilmember Druffel, we're talking about getting information from the committee, from the consultant that did the study on the best uh, configuration for our new Department of Housing, Homeless Services. Uh, they can come on the 26th. And we're trying to figure out which, which time of the day would most likely yield the most uh, participation. And we're hoping this is a representative group. So again, the four choices are bre breakfast, lunch, three and four. Vote as many times as you think you could make it to that meeting. So all those people who could be here at a breakfast meeting, please raise your hand high while I count slowly. One, two, three, three. Okay. Those who could make a lunch meeting, raise your hand high. Oh, that's better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can't raise two hands, though. Nine. Okay, three o'clock. Those who could be here at three. One, two, three. Okay, and those who could be here at four. Zero. Hopefully that provides you some information. Okay. All right, thank you very much. I uh, apologize for that slight delay. We will... Um, we will now get going with department hearings and hopefully we can be as efficient as we were yesterday and um, and get out of here before it's too late in the evening. So I would like to invite the Parks and Recreation team to come on up and uh, tell us everything we need to know. Okay, we think everything is working. Mr. Syracuse, you are recognized. Thanks, Chair. I just want everybody to know that it's I-40 in, you. in your book. It is I-40 in your book, not J-40, which means library is also I. Okay. Great. Uh, Ms. Odom, thank you so much for being here. And if you will um, introduce your team and then tell us if this budget will allow you to do what you would like to do. And if not, um, what you need, not that we can guarantee we can give it to you, but we do want to hear what your needs are. Um, so we'll turn the mic over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I would first like to answer that question. Yes, this budget does support um, the mission of the Department of Parks and Recreation. Um, yeah. Um, and I would like to uh, thank you all for this opportunity here and for all you do. Um, to make Nashville a livable city 
in our parks and greenways and open spaces, inviting areas for our growing city. Before I get started with my remarks, I'd like to recognize our team. Joining me here on the platform are Cindy Harrison, Assistant Director for Greenways and Open Spaces, Mark Bradfield with our Planning and Facilities uh, di Division, uh, and Shanita White, who is over to my left at the table, Assistant Director for Finance and Administration. In the gallery are Jim Hester, Assistant Director for Environmental Education, Outdoor Recreation, and Special Events. John Holmes, Assistant Director for Revenue Producing Facilities. Jackie Jones, Superintendent of Community Affairs. Stevan Nellums, Assistant Director for Community Recreation Programs and Cultural Arts. Rick Taylor, Assistant Director of Consolidated Maintenance. And we're also joined by our Park Board Chair, Ms. Terry Hughes and Vice Chair, Dr. Michelle Steele. Um, before I get into my remarks, I would like to apologize for my voice. We are in Nashville and the pollen count is very high and um, this is what I'm dealing with. So <clears throat> hopefully it's not too raspy for you all. Very briefly, I'd like to share with you some of the department's accomplishments and challenges over this past fiscal year. Our community centers continue to be a vibrant ga gathering place for recreational opportunities. We've expanded our after-school feeding program to nine sites that will provide hot meals to children in our after-schools program. And we've created an annual citywide anti-bullying event to call attention to this important issue young people currently face online, in school, and in their communities. Currently, over 2,000 youth are enrolled in our after-school programs, and over 3,000 are enrolled in the summer enrichment program. Our cultural arts programs are thriving. We've provided over 10,000 hours of dance, music, theater, and visual arts classes, performances, concerts, and rehearsals to a very responsive community. Community engagement with our cultural arts program has been phenomenal, as, we have, as was evidenced by the turnout for the Centennial Arts Center placement of the historical marker to reflect the building's role in the city's civil rights history prior to the facility's 50th anniversary celebration that took place in April. We've completed phase two renovations to Centennial Park, which includes the Great Lawn, a beautifully designed space worthy of Centennial Centennial Park's iconic status and teeming with people who love it. This Saturday, we officially opened the new Picnic Pavilion at Hadley Park, which celebrates Hadley's African-American heritage with a vibrant ceiling design inspired by African textiles. This month, we started stonework repair at Fort Nagley, which represents a long-awaited investment in deferred maintenance at this important historic site where we're also wrapping up an in-depth and participatory master plan. Our maintenance division continues to do the hard work of making our parks and facilities inviting spaces. This year, we have planted over 700, uh, 700 trees, installed LED lighting at several facilities, refinished 13 gym floors, installed a new picnic shelter at Fisk Park, New fin and new fencing at dog parks in Centennial and Two Rivers Parks. We have expanded our therapeutic recreation programming to currently include one satellite location at Coleman Community Center and, addi and an additional site to open in August at the Bellevue Community Center. The expansion of this program will ultimately allow us to serve 50 additional adults with disabilities. The demand for golf has increased in the past year. We have seen an increase of 12% year to date in rounds played vers versus this same time period last year. Many new players have taken up the game and other outdoor activities since the COVID pandemic. And attendance at the Parthenon has totaled 250,000 this year. 
Our greenways continue to be one of our most popular amenities. We're in the process of designing eight miles of new greenways and adding 23 acres of new open space. In addition, we have a number of public-private partnerships that have resulted in new Metro-owned greenway segments that will be built and maintained by the private sector at no cost to Metro. Our park police continue to fulfill the mission of the department, as well as protecting and serving our parks and open spaces. We were recently able to, able to hire one new lateral police officer. Our mounted unit continues to provide public safety as well as being one of our most popular outreach tools for both the department and the division. And we're working to grow this division to include dedicated officers for our greenways. Metro Parks Police have responded to more than 1,500 calls for service and report 10,000 community interactions. Outdoor recreation programs continue in popularity, particularly as COVID risks diminish. One of our biggest accomplishments is handling the increase in people's desire to be outside and participate in outdoor nature-oriented activities. Visitor centers are crowded, programs are full, and pu public interest is high in all our natural areas, nature centers, and in the use of parks for special events. We've strengthened our safety plans for the very popular Laurel Woods Trail. This new 12.5 mile trail in the back country of Beeman Park is very popular, and this year we've reached a point where people are not overextending themselves or getting lost in the new walk on this new walk in the woods. This is evidenced by few, fewer lost hiker calls mm. and fewer complaints or questions about how to use the trail along with increased use. There, these are just a few of the good things we have going on in parks. Our challenges though, tend to be similar across the board. Like other industries across the nation, we've had a hard time filling vacancies. It's been especially difficult for our part-time and seasonal positions uh, because of the competitiveness of the, of the uh, job market. Our park police unit is currently 50% below budgeted staffing levels. Supply chain issues and inflation have impacted construction schedules and the demand for programs, services, and maintenance exceeds our resources. And despite these challenges, our parks teammates continue to show up every day and do their very best to serve our city. For that, I give a very heartfelt thank you. That concludes my remarks, and we are prepared to take your questions. Thank you so much, Director Odom. I know everyone here has made great use of the open spaces and greenways while we've um, re 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 rediscovered the wonderful aspect of being outside. So we appreciate that. Thank Are there council members have, oh, I have several council members with questions. I will answer them in the order I see them, beginning with council member Suara. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Director Odom, for the good work that you and your department are doing. Uh, I echo what the Chair says and uh, the need for our parks. I think the question that I have, you've, you, you mentioned it in your presentation lightly, uh, but I wanted to see if you can expand on what you're going to do about it. When I look at the book, I see that, like you rightly said, in 2020, 2021, the budgeted amount and the actuals are very different, especially for personnel, mm -hmm. meaning that we're not spending it. But over the years, we continue to increase that budget. Mm -hmm. And so for this year, the same thing, when I look at the actual to date for FY22, it's still way below the budget. So there's a trend for the last three years that that budget is actually not expended. Mm -hmm. But every budget year, the amount keeps going up. Mm -hmm. And so my question to you is, can you highlight some of the things that you're doing to make sure that before we keep adding more money to make sure that what we already have, uh, that we do to increase staffing. And then in terms of the people that are working the overtime, is that built into your budget or working extra? Are they compensated for the extra work that they're doing? Thank uh, you for thank that question, you. Uh, Council Member Suara. So a couple of things. So um, we have um, made efforts, um, outstanding efforts to fill positions. So a couple of things that we've done um, is participate in uh, job fairs 
uh, both metro-wide and outside of metro to try to recruit and retain folks. Um, and then two, as you will notice, as a part of our FY23 budget request, um, we have requested funding to, um, particularly for our maintenance and uh, maintenance worker positions, to hire uh, folks coming in at step three. So we are increasing that uh, level of pay to try to be more competitive, at least competitive intra-metro. That, that, that is um, a concern. And so um, I'll say that, and you noticing the trend of um, salary savings, um, we can fill those positions, but I'll tell you over the past several years, beyond the past three, we have relied on salary savings to um, make the budget uh, at the bottom line. So, you know, there is the um, salary and personnel areas, and then there is the other portion of the budget, which is uh, typically discretionary, but not always. Um, and so what we have, the way that we have balanced, I know probably the past 10 plus years, is um, to um, overspend in um, the other area for supplies, equipment, operations that we need, and underspend in, um, in staffing. Um, at this point, we have not seen this level of challenge quite frankly, particularly since I've been director, with um, acquiring staff to fill positions. This is, this is just new. Um, and, um, you know, our staff is um, at capacity for all of the operations and services. We are saturated um, and would very much welcome folks to come join the Parks and Recreation team. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Pulley. Thank you, Madam Chair. A uh, couple of questions for you. Uh, thank you for being here, uh, Director Odom. Uh, I've had a couple of uh, inquiries from constituents, and I don't know the answer to this question, uh, but they've inquired about golf courses being closed one day per week. Is that a change from a previous schedule? And if that is, in fact, the case, uh, do you have any plans to open them up seven days a week? We do have plans to open them seven days a week. Um, the, again, that is, um, was the impact of staffing, um, not having the staffing. So in some areas, and you all may recall um, several months ago, particularly when we were in, at the height of, not at the height, probably in the middle phase of COVID and facilities were, um, at least ours were starting to open. Uh, our, particularly our revenue producing facilities had kind of shifting uh, operating hours. That was because of staffing. Um, and so as we acquire more staff to, um, to work the golf courses, we will certainly have those, uh, uh, those hours extended. And do you have the money in the budget to fill those positions? If you can, I understand how the labor shortage is now. Yes, we do. Okay. Yes. Um, one, other, one other question about you had mentioned that you were having difficulty filling the park police positions. Yes. Do you have additional FTEs in this budget for park police? We o do. I'm over and above the ones that you can't fill? We do. Can you um, tell me what the plan is moving forward uh, if you can't fill the ones you have now or how you're going to fill them and additional FTEs? Well, the plan is to continue to work to retain and recruit those. The ones that are in this FY23 budget are particularly focused on the Greenway, um, the Greenway unit. So it's, um, I believe it's 12 officers and two sergeants um, specifically in this budget. We will continue, you know, like I said, to work with MNPD um, and other resources to try to fill those positions. If you can't fill those positions, uh, is your plan to use that money uh, to build a budget like you have in the past? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't think I have anything else. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good questions. Um, I've got uh, Councilmember Benedict next. Let me give you a, a microphone. <laughs> Shout. There you go. Thank you, Chair. And Director Odom and your entire team, thank you for all that you do. You just, my community is very pleased with what you're doing. We're very concerned, though, however, about e-bikes. And so I see that there's um, significant investment in Greenway. 
both park police and in um, the addition of five planning positions, it seems to me that e-bikes on greenways are a big concern for us within the parks department and as in regards to safety. Mm -hmm. um, I know we're gonna hear from NDOT in a little bit, but I have a lot of constituents in District 7 who use Shelby Bottoms. <clears throat> they enter on the north part of Shelby Bottoms and they use that for transit downtown and to connect to other greenways. Many of them are like me, where we're not quite powerful enough to ride an e-bike all the way in, and certainly around town with our hills. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, a regular bike. So we need the e-bike. Mm -hmm. um, what do you have enough? Um, I know that there's been studies on this. Do you have enough in this budget to make sure that we're either finishing a review on e-bikes and or working on enforcement so that we can go ahead and launch e-bikes through B-Cycle? I know that under state law they're allowed, so maybe you want to touch on that as well if, if you'd like. Not, um, I'm going longer than what I'd like you to answer. So. Do you have what you need to enforce any concerns that you have about e-bikes on our greenways in this new budget? And if not, what would be needed? Thank you. Thank you for your question. I, I believe that we do have the resources that we need um, for any kind of um, enforcement or regulate, regulatory um, oversight of e-bikes on greenways. As you mentioned, they already are allowed on greenways per state law. Um, in my recent conversations with um, uh, Ms. Alcorn at NDOT, um, what we've talked about is a competitive bid process to um, develop a scope for a bike share, a community-wide bike share program. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to that happening. Um, you know, so that all um, offer offerers of that service have the opportunity to bid on providing that service, um, that programming um, throughout the city. So it would not just be on greenways, but of course in right of ways, et cetera, throughout the city. So, yeah. So just to clarify, you have what you need in order for us to feel good that e-bikes are going to be no issue on our greenways anywhere, which I, I believe the board has already said, we're good on e-bikes on greenways. I just want to make sure you have what you need so that going forward, we're not going to have any concerns about that as far as class one. Right? I believe, I'm sorry. Yeah. So you're right. The parks board has um, agreed that e -bike, class one e-bikes or e-bikes are um, allowed on greenways. Now I will say in terms of enforcement, I think we have what we need, but that is uh, we rely heavily on um, bike users, pedestrians, uh, greenway users to, you know, kind of um, self-regulate. Uh, we certainly do not have enough park police to be on every greenway all the time. So that would be my expectation, similar to, you know, self-regulation in dog parks, et cetera. So, yes, I do believe that we have what we need. Again, I'm looking forward to... Um, working with NDOT on a community-wide bike share program that goes through our procurement process so that it is equitable and transparent. I'm going to take a moment of privilege and ask, would that bike share program be docked or dockless? I'm assuming docked. Docked. Okay. I think, I think that's a, an important question to ask, and that, I know that's another discussion, but I've, I've been in other cities where their bikes line on the side oh, of the road no. everywhere because oh, there's no, no place no. to put them. Yeah, so no. good. No. <laughs> All right. Um, it's not my turn. So on to Council Member Druffel and then Syracuse. Ah, uh, we both raised our hand. Okay. It was hard um, to tell. Uh, I, uh, Ms. Odom, um, thanks for everything. Uh, it, I mean, we're expanding and we're getting uh, a lot of new people in and they're all interested in, in our greenways and stuff. Do you have an attendance by interest by chance? So like all the people that use golf, all the people that use tennis, swim, et cetera. Is there some uh, metric or some uh, something that would uh, record all the, the attendance by interest? I think probably so. I mean, in terms of golf, we count rounds. Um, and then tennis, yeah, people register for uh, or reserve those courts typically. So, yeah. Is there a way we could get a copy of that? Um, so swim the greenways. I don't know if you if you can monitor greenways, but yeah. anything that you have, I'm just curious as to what the expansion. Okay. And I think it would help us understand forecast. Of course, being a tennis player, I'd like to see a little bit more 
expansion there, but I'd just like to be uh, get an, a sense of where that's going. Okay. Uh, second quick question is on parks and recreation at a glance uh, under other uh, program revenue. Mm -hmm. um, you last year you had two million three ninety two, and this year um, you're projecting two hundred thirty six thousand nine hundred. And that's in page I-41. Mm -hmm. uh, can you update us on where that loss or where, what we're not getting this year? Sure. I can turn your mic on. Thank you. The at a glance that's at the front, it also includes grant revenue. So that will be the loss of um, some of our grants for FY23. And that's somewhat standard practice because grants okay. are one year that when, when we don't know that we're going to have it for the next year, they show up as a loss. Often, often they're awarded after our budget cycle is over and then they show back up as revenue. It, yeah. It's just we're going from 2,003,000 to 236,000 and then... In 2021, we had 751,000. Is there something that we stopped getting uh, along the way? That's a big chunk. Well, um, like the council lady said, at the time that the grants are, that we do budget projections, there are several grants that are unknown at, the, at that time. So we can't, but the budget office advises us not to budget grants at the time of um, budget submissions. Okay. In 2021-22, is that a forecast then? Did you actually get two million three? Yes, we cannot. They will not allow us to budget anything that we don't have an, an award for. So we do have those award, awards current, currently. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Syracuse. Thank you, Chair. Good to see you all. Um, quick uh, clarifying question under program revenue. I'm just curious. Obviously, in, in FY22, we show about 2.4 million in uh, other program revenue, maybe this is what uh, Councilmember Druffel was asking. Yeah. That 90% decrease was just grants? It's time, yes. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and that's exactly what okay. the council member was referencing, is the timing. Is that, is that your question? Okay. Um, Councilmember Johnston. Thank you. I have uh, several questions. Um, to expound on what Councilman uh, Suara started, um, it looks like in FY21, you returned about three and a half million dollars to the general fund from your original allocation. Is that correct? Yes. And yet the budget uh, in FY22 was $10 million over the actual expenditures, correct? Actual expenditures were 39 and some change and the actual and then FY22 allocation was 48 and some change. Okay. So where are you in... Uh, this year, what are you expecting to return to the general fund this year on pace? I don't know. What what the strategy is, though, is not to return that much. So the, if there are one-time expenses that qualify for operating as operating budget expenditures, we will use operating bud budget expenditures for that. Do you know where you are as far as your expenditures right now, seeing as how we have about a month and a half left of... The fiscal year? No. Oh, no. There you go. Um, I really believe based on our last uh, budget to actual report, which was on last Friday, we probably had about um, a variance of about 12 million um, currently. So you're on pace to return several million dollars to the general fund this year, correct? Possibly. Okay, I'm just wanting to make a comment that I'm wondering how prudent it is to continually increase substantially the allocation when we're continually bringing back uh, to the general fund because it just ties up money. Um, one of my specific questions, um, Park Police, how many uh, currently do you have open positions? We have the, um, I believe we have five that we received last year and um, um, probably two part-time and, um, but we did receive five trainees last year that we have not been able to feel they have not had any interest um, from the academy. So a total of how many FTEs do you currently have open positions for in Park Police? 
Let's say roughly eight. I would say probably, well, we probably had a sergeant. So a pro probably approximately 10. Let's just go with Okay. We had a couple of retirees. So if we add the 14, you're looking at 24 open positions. How long have those 10 been open? The five that we have, that we got last year, they've been open all year because they have no interest. I mean, they've been heavily recruiting, especially with our new um, park police captain. He's been actively trying to um, recruit individuals. Yeah, I'm not questioning the efforts to fill the positions. I'm just saying we haven't been able to. So my question, I'm questioning the prudence of allocating another million plus dollars for 14 more parks police when we can't fill what we have open now and we haven't been able to do that for an entire year. Um, but I'll move on. Um, the other concern that you guys had was filling vacancies, which I get and is across the board, uh, whether it's municipal government or uh, in, the, in the private sector. So I think part of the challenge is the pay scale that we have. Um, and so I see your um, maintenance and repair worker, you are looking at 173,000 and some change for a salary adjustment. Um, is that enough? Um, in order to make these positions attractive enough to actually fill the position, I'm just wondering if that number needs to be higher and what specific employees is that applying to? Is it everyone in maintenance repair or is it just the very, very lowest paid we're bumping? It's the, it is the maintenance and repair worker classification and I believe the custodial worker uh, classification is included in that. I would say that, um, allowing us to, uh, the, the funding that we're requesting to start at um, step three, bring folks in and then those who are below that, raise them, we could always, it could always be higher. If I think, I, I think what we run into, and I, I wouldn't be against it, but I think what we run into is when you impact one classification, it may impact others in the department. Um, and that is something for HR to, to give us guidance on. But um, I know that I, I'll just quite frankly say that even though industries across the country are having issues, um, municipalities and, and um, towns are having issues filling positions, um, public uh, organizations would never be able to compete with private. And, ne you know, we just won't. Um. So the other question I have is for, and this is just me not uh, maybe understanding why there's two sections of planning positions for one department. So you've got the staff for Greenway and Open Space Division adding five planning positions, but then on the other side, you've got planning division staff adding four. That's just a, um, a question of why do we have two separate planning divisions? Those are two separate divisions. Greenways um, and Open Space is certainly uh, because of the work, uh, the uh, over 30 years of work that that division has done, um, certainly de deserves a devoted staff. And then our um, general planning division um, oversees some capital, you know, capital development in the department. So for the Greenway and Open Space, how many planning staff do you have now? Three. What's the most you've ever had? Three. So you're wanting to go to eight? Yes, and, and um, several of those are um, folks with specialized experience, a, a real estate person. Um, and then quite frankly, on both the, well, particularly the Greenway side, um, the capacity and the volume of work is such that we need additional staff to, to move forward um, in a um, uh, more expedient manner. Okay, um, for the planning staff, the adding an assistant director, mm -hmm. don't we have an assistant director? There is one. Um, the current assistant director, uh, there may be plans for um, him to divert and give time to another project, a special project. Um, and I will need someone to lead that division. Um, okay, that's all the questions that I have right now. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Johnston. Councilmember Bradford. Thank you, Chair. Um, so my questions 
first of all, I also share the concerns of my colleague, Councilmember Johnson. You know, if we can't even fill the five positions you were budgeted last year, why should we spend a million dollars for another 14? You know, you should fill what you've got before you ask for more. So I do have concerns about, you know, that's a million dollars that could be spent on maintenance and upkeep and repairs to some of our parks. Um, and that leads to my first real question is, is, do you have a list that you could provide members of the council of what parks are in need of repair, you know, the state of repair, um, just kind of like a priority list of maintenance and deferred maintenance? Sure. Yes, um, sir. That'd be appreciated. And then my other question I wanted to ask is, you know, you mentioned it last year when, when some of us asked about it, but for anybody who may be watching for the first time, can you explain why um, the Parks Department has its own police force and why that's not a task that's done by MNPD officers? So we um, do have a memorandum of understanding with Metro Police that the captain who oversees um, our Park Police Division is with Metro Police. So we work seamlessly with them. Our Park Police are um, devoted to the park system. Um, and it is advantageous to, to us in the Parks Department uh, as well as um, to the city. So it's similar to, um, I would say, school resource officers um, with the exception of um, that the Park Police are not in the same classification um, as far as pay plan, uh, uh, pay plan as MMPD. So there are different pay levels, but overseen um, and go through the same training as Metro Police. Okay, I have a quick follow-up on that. That kind of ties in with the issue of recruitment. Have you had conversations with HR to try and get the Park Police on the same type of pay plan as MMPD? So as if they're got, if you can make more money and be on the same classification as a police officer, you might be able to get someone more interested to sign up. Yes, sir, we have, and those are ongoing, ongoing discussions. Yes, sir. Thank you for those answers. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Good questions. Council Member Gamble. You're on the list. I'm working my way down. I'm just telling everybody we got lots of people on the list, so if you can keep your questions short and concise, that would be great. Thank you, Chair Allen, and thank you, Director Odom, and your team for all the work that you're doing to be good stewards of our tax dollars. Um, I, I myself, I'm, I'm happy to see the goal of increasing staff for maintenance and security of our parks. Uh, the park, we have a great park in my district, Cedar Hill Park, and I get calls from mm -hmm. residents and, and constituents about the need for maintenance and security. And I know staffing has been a challenge with that. So I'm happy to see this. I also, I, the question I have is about the program revenue uh, charges, commissions and fees. I see that you're projecting an increase in that revenue for 2022, 2023. You talked a little bit about the increase of golf services. Can you talk about what other fees and, and charges come as a result of that and how staffing, uh, whether it's filling current open positions and new positions, would help in, in that area? So um, I'll take your last question first. So in reference to, um, I think it was a question that um, Councilman Druffel asked, uh, or I can't recall, someone asked about um, golf courses and the hours of the golf courses. As we are able to increase staffing for programs and services, then the hours, therefore, um, those programs and services that are sources of revenue would increase. Um, and so in terms of the revenue, in FY20, um, the Parks Board approved um, rate increases um, just across the department, or fee increases across the department. And since we have gone through COVID or are still in it technically, and um, uh, programs and facilities are becoming uh, more normalized now in their operations, we hope to see the impact of those increases. We have not fully seen um, the impact of those increases because uh, the, the increases were approved in February of 2020, I believe, to be effective in July of 2020. At that time, most of our facilities were closed and you know we were in the midst of uh, heightened COVID. And so we haven't really seen a normal operating year 
um, since then. And so that, that is what is reflected there, our uh, projection that we are now in regular operating mode. All your questions, great, thank you. Um, Council Member Gamble, uh, Council Member Swope. All of my questions have been asked and answered. Excellent. Director Odom, thank you for being here. We're good. Council Member Bircher. Put you back. There you go. You got it. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, Director Odom and uh, all the park staff that's, that's present here today. I, I want to walk it back to the 50% the below staffing. Uh, Director Odom, if you could prioritize, um, what is the greatest need for staffing um, that you would see is, is pressing outside of what's, what's been requested? Um, outside of be, what's been requested, I would say that um, there are needs of, so safety and security, and then um, the maintenance side. So park police, and then the maintenance sides. Th those are the areas that touch everywhere in the park system. So those would be um, priority. How many vacancies are in the, the maintenance and repair? What's the, t the total number for that? You know how many vacancies? I'll have to get you that number. for the Okay, and then one last question. Uh -huh. S step three, what, what starting salary is that? I, I don't have the, the pay chart. Roughly about $35,000. Okay, and then promise you, this is my last question. Yeah. What, what's the race breakdown for the maintenance and repair department? Oh, I'll have to get you that as well. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Make a list of that. And Councilmember Johnston for the second time. Thank you. And I appreciate you indulging me because I just had one more. I'm just wondering since, um, and, and you just said that the priority would be safety and security, which um, I agree with. Um, I know that we have a lot of our parks that don't get locked at night because we don't have the parks police to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I want electronic gates, but that's mm -hmm. a whole nother, <laughs> that that's a whole nother thing. So I'm wondering, since I think across the board everywhere, it's hard to hire commissioned police because mm -hmm. people don't necessarily, it's not the most attractive job at this moment. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it would be more prudent in order to get the job done to have more of a park security, even if it was subcontracted out so that we have a presence there of mm -hmm. not necessarily commissioned officers, but someone that can have a presence there to show we're here, can lock the gates at night and those types of things instead of waiting for an indeterminate amount of time for commissioned officers to apply for the job, which obviously would be more expensive when you're a commissioned officer than a security firm. So I'm just wondering if we thought about that from a strategic perspective we'll um, to not only save money, but to actually get the job done. We'll take that into consideration. Um, I know that there, um, for instance, the Parthenon has uh, hired security. So that's something to consider, yes. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Chair, um, for recognizing me as I do not serve on the Budget and Finance Committee. But we're glad you're here. Thank you. Um, I think my questions have largely been answered, but I do have some follow-up questions. Um, colleagues have focused on kind of park police and maintenance and asked the vacancy question. I guess m my question would be, what is your total vacancy number? So just all in how many open positions do you have? Um, we have, uh, just one second, I have that number. And it was a part of the, um, part of the questionnaire that you all sent, total. Um, and I apologize, I did look no, in the okay. folder, but I didn't that's okay. no find the. Um, total vacancies, 666, head count, which is 247.83 FTE. So most of those are seasonal, part-time, or pooled, pooled positions, so as needed, kind of, you know, uh, referees and sports officials and things like that. Okay, so at present, 666 open positions, 243 of which are FTE so, and so the other you, are uh, seasonal. Part time. 666 head count, so that's positions. Understood. The FTE associated with that 
I, I, it's 247.83. Understood. Thank you for the clarification. And there, there were some re very recent additions on the on the council SharePoint. So that okay, may, I'll, information I'll go may back and now. check that again. Thank you. And then just by way of follow up, um, I do appreciate um, the additional uh, positions from a planning uh, perspective um, in greenways. I think, um, you know, long range strategically, I know Metro has struggled a little bit whether, you know, the public property division um, and, and staffing up there in support of NDOT, then public works and greenways, or as we had said to NDOT many, many years ago for sidewalk acquisition and right away, like why don't we have a specific staff person in, um, uh, in the department for that? So is that, is that what you're anticipating here as you seek to build the network, then you would have um, a dedicated person um, for just making those strategic connections, looking at the map, proactively reaching out about process Absolutely. access easements, et cetera. Absolutely. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, and then um, uh, Greenway Division, we talked about planning division staff. Um, can you speak to um, uh, just the kind of the, the, the workload and project management in your capital projects division? So, um, you know, you're building a new structure or community center or enhancing mm -hmm. a park and so mm -hmm. forth. Um, how do you all kind of, it, would you anticipate in adding these positions that these folks would then function as project managers because at present you have project management contracted. Right. Is that correct? That's correct. And, okay. and I anticipate that we would continue that contract management um, contract, those um, contractors. Uh, we have a number of um, uh, high profile um, projects in development. Um, currently we have a staff of three in the planning division. And so um, in terms of capacity and um, or volume and complexity of projects, um, and then capacity, um, just to spread those um, more evenly so uh, uh, people have some relief from their workloads, uh, we want to increase that staff. And then how many capital projects do you have um, underway presently? And I know that runs the gamut you know, from a, a large facility? Um, About 30. Okay. And, and how many, um, from a procurement perspective, how many uh, uh, contractors do you have managing those 30 projects? Is that one firm, multiple firms? How is that organized? Multiple firms. We have, I think we have six uh, firms on contract. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Doing management. And so um, would you, with added staff position, would those folks just then be liaising with the contracted folks or would you think that we could do less in uh, contracted work and more in, in, in staff work? I think that um, maybe the staff work would probably shift more to us, but we would certainly keep those contracts. But because there, there is, um, can be a, a level of, as, as you know, a level of expertise that these firms have that we do not have. Um, and like so, a stormwater expertise, perhaps, or something like that. Something that's like that. Often needed mm -hmm. in parks. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and to the same question that Ms. Vercher asked about uh, the, the maintenance and repair uh, uh, workers, bringing that step three to, to 35K. Um, so uh, in your um, planning uh, division, those new positions, I know that they range from a planner one and technical. What, what are we talking about from a, just a salary perspective there, maybe for one, two, three of those positions, just so the community's uh, aware? Um, just planners often have, you know, advanced degrees and so forth. Mm -hmm. And um, to your uh, point about um, the difficulty of, of, of staffing into municipal government, I just wanted to understand that, that planning division and space a little bit better, please. So then when we're talking about um, a, uh, a planner, three, that's $79,000. Um, and then a technical specialist, technical specialist one and two range from $55,000 to $66,000. Hey, thank you. And last question, Chair. Um, for summer uh, salary, um, I, I noticed I have two golf courses in, in my district in the Warner Park system um, and had seen the, the posted uh, hourly salary for summer 
um, were at $11. Um, and when I saw that, I thought, wow, y'all are going to struggle to fill those mm -hmm. um, positions. Mm -hmm. And so I guess, you know, whether hourly like that or kind of, you know, multiple colleagues have touched on it. Um, but for something that has kind of been an ongoing concern mm -hmm. about whether it's entry level salary, and I appreciate, you know, and I think colleagues can see, you know, bringing that maintenance up to step three, that's 173K. Um, that's not that much. I understand then there's, you know, you're, you're pulling that across, you know, the whole entire system. But in your engagement um, with HR and mm -hmm. Ms. Hall's group and just the capacity there, so for kind of a, a, a bit of a legacy issue here of a, a very high number of vacancies and kind of thinking about right sizing, maybe the, the salary points. Um, is it just a capacity issue on the HR side to confer with you all? Do you, do you need a study? Um, you know, what's going to um, help you all to kind of recalibrate your, your salary so that we don't have the, the issue that we've been speaking about? So I think additional funding, because uh, frankly, in the uh, pay plan, there is a range um, for seasonal pay. And so what we have done to try to uh, become more competitive is um, with our um, pool of seasonal pay, we have a, a, a number of positions. And so to increase the pay with the funding that we have, that means you reduce the number of positions. And so that has been an immediate strategy that we have used. Um, and that has worked some, but I would look for um, additional funding and um, yeah, I would say that. So I appreciate that on the seasonal side of things, but on your actual staffed positions that mm -hmm. remain mm -hmm. open, can you speak to me a little bit more about what you need from HR potentially? I mean, I know every step has a range, but I, I just... Um, it's, it's within the, the department can set the, because of the range, the department, whatever the department can bear is what the salary can be with the approved range that's in the, in the pay plan. Okay. So that, that's not an HR side. It's, it's really more of a funding side for us. So if, if, just say if we wanted it to be at $15 an hour, for us currently, we'd have to reduce the number of positions that we're offering and then we could increase that pay. But to have... Uh, to say we have 30 positions and we're only we're going to increase the pay so we can only hire 20 for the remaining 10 we would request the funding to bring those up gotcha. we could right, council hinderman yeah. we're about to get into being an entire group behind so if you maybe can all set thank you good good questions and that's a uh, hopefully something we can look at i think that kind of spans several um departments council member bradford Thank you, Chair. This one should be quick. Um, going back to the conversation about the increase in rates for some of the park facilities and what vendors or camp operators might have to pay for those rates, um, have you had a lot of pushback or a lot of issues with um, camp owners or vendors? And what has parks done to try and, you know, help soften the blow so that some of these parks who are haven't been struggling the last couple of years with COVID aren't put out of business because of these new rates? So, as you know, we have, um, I, I hope it was communicated to you, that, but we, um, our revenue producing division has worked with some of the um, camp operators to um, give them discounts and then put off any kind of um, fee increases. We certainly don't want to put operators out of business. Thank you. Appreciate that. Council Member Nash. Thank you. Quick one. Uh, I know it's not unique to just parks, but uh, occasionally I'll get a call from somebody whose car got broke into at Whitfield Park or up at Pitts Park. Um, I know we have cameras at some of our parks, and I wonder if there's been any discussion about maybe a mobile camera that you could move to uh, a location at one time and then move it on. Yes. We have had discussions about that, and, and that is pending. Yes, sir. And In fact, that was brought to me by uh, Park Police. So, yeah. Yes, sir. And I, I would like to follow that security question up with, um, I know most of what I'm aware of uh, with regard to safety is is car break-ins as opposed to any other thing. Can you talk very briefly about 
um, whatever statistics there are on safety in parks versus greenways, since we're having the discussion about adding more police for greenways, do we do we have um, data on how many, if any, have happened on greenways? And if it's clearly there no there no there are no car windows being broken on our greenways, except maybe at the at the trailheads where the cars are parked. Are there are there other things that we're adding safety to to deal with? Um, I think there are there are lots of lots of um, crimes that happen in parks, um, and I'd have to get you the the statistics. Um, I get a report every week from our park police, so I'd be happy to share okay, that. Okay, if, if you could provide that, 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 that would be that would be great. That would be great. Um, I, I know that there are best practices about having greenways police and things like that, but um, it'd just be helpful to know. How that how that ties in with that? We are um, we. This has been a great discussion. We've uh, I think gotten a lot of great questions um, answered, and I appreciate the uh, library department waiting patiently. Um, so with that, I don't see any other questions. But if we think of things, we will certainly email you, Director Erdem, and you can send the answers uh, back to uh, Director Darby. Right now, my list is the number of people using different types of parks, the maintenance list, and the crime statistics are the three things that we've asked for. And then we'll put those on our SharePoint and other council members will have access to that information. Um, so we appreciate everything y'all are doing and hopefully we can um, provide you what you need to continue to do such a great job. And thank y'all for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. thank you. With that, I invite the library team up and we'll um, have another great discussion with y'all.